right, let's pick up with our next game from the yearly Super Blitz Arena. And this time we've got a line from the Fianchetto King's Indian stemming from the English. You know, it's almost like I've been working on an English book. And I have been playing this sideline for quite some time now as, from my experience... Players with black just know the standard operating procedure after knight bd7 because so many people play knight c3 or queen c2. And you can just play automatic, no thought moves for black. For a while, your pieces just go to natural squares. So I started looking at different players and I stumbled on the way Keith Arkell handles this position. And I'm a big fan of his very, very practical repertoire with white and black. Now, objectively, it may not be the best from the engine's perspective, but I don't care. I'm becoming more and more of a practical chess player as I'm getting older, and to me, it's, as I'm writing this current English book, say, okay, if I recommend knight c3, white needs to know, like, 12 lines, each of them 15 moves deep, with a number of branches. Or, you have a set of ideas, and it's more practical, more annoying. And it stems from the third choice move, d5. Now, how natural and how normal is it for black to play knight b6 in this structure? It's not. And out of all the games that I've played with this in practice, and I have probably 100 or so at this point, no one has played the main line yet against me. In fact, I often will get e5, e6, or c6. These are top three moves. In this case, we see c6, and I take. And as we see, we've got an Arkell game in the database. Didn't go so well for him, but knight d4 was what I played. Now black should play knight e5, where taking runs into bishop h3, and we get this kind of line, which is seen in some variations of the English. I don't know about so much about knight c3, but we have a roughly balanced position here. So, interesting. But, after knight d4, my opponent already went wrong. Very, very systematic, easy play for white. And you want to shock the opponent. You want to surprise them as quickly as you can because if you can take your opponent out of their comfort zone, and yet you're still in yours, you have a huge psychological advantage in the opening. So if it's not hard to play, it's got surprise value, it's poisonous, and it's in your style, why aren't you playing that in comparison to the main line. That's so easy to go wrong. And that's pretty much my philosophy with this opening book I'm, I'm working on. If I'm comparing the line that I have to the main line, and the engine's giving it about the same, and it's far less to learn, there's more surprise value, it's more practical, it's a lot like Magnus's repertoire a lot of the time. I'm going with that. So after queen e8, knight d4, black gets a little bit of initiative here, but it's solid, simple, easy. I don't mind zeros. Ulf Anderson philosophy. Keep on working the equal position until your opponent makes a mistake. That's what chess is. So knight fg4, and there's that practical mistake from the 2277 rated blitz opponent. Now, simple. I just overprotect d4, and we have the subtle threat of attacking the knight, which was missed by the opponent. And it shows even good players will blunder away basic positions with not a lot going on. That was a single move threat. So blunders happen. No disrespect to my opponent, but easy, quick game with an interesting line inspired by Grandmaster Keith Arkell with move seven, d5.